Hey y'all, welcome to Craftable Things. I'm Patrice and today our DTF journey continues. Okay y'all, so if this is your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, check me out on all other social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I am also there as Craftable Things. And I might add, you just might love our Facebook group. But y'all, we are here because our DTF journey is going to the next level. So we started with a converted printer and now we are going to be diving in into an L1800 and I want to thank ProColor for sending me this L1800 DTF printer so that I can review it and test it out and let y'all know what I think about it. So I absolutely love DTF and y'all, yes, there is a lot of maintenance required for DTF. Well, with my converted printer, there was a lot of maintenance involved. However, with this L1800 from ProColored, all I really have to do is run a print head cleaning each day and a nozzle check just to make sure everything is fine. And so far, that's all I've really had to do. I haven't had to do any major maintenance on it, just that. And so far, everything's been flowing, but I've only had it for about a week now. So I don't want to make you guys think that there is no maintenance involved at all. They do stress the importance of maintenance with this machine daily. Now, why do I love DTF? I absolutely love DTF because I don't have to do all of that weeding. And when I want to do multicolor designs and you want to do vinyl, like you have to keep layering and putting it together, well, DTF takes it out. And for those of you who don't know what DTF is, DTF stands for direct to film, meaning you are printing directly onto a piece of film. That sounds easy. But it's not quite that simple. I am going to walk you all through the process of really unboxing this printer and setting it up and doing a first print with it. So let's get started. I'm really excited about opening up our new DTF printer. This is an L1800 from Pro Colored, and it is packaged really well. It arrived in this crate. So just make sure that you can maneuver it around or you may need a little bit of help. But let's see what all comes with this printer. So you have this accessory bundle. Of course, you need a USB and we also have syringes. These are other supplies that you'll need when you're setting up and also for using your machine. You'll need it probably in the future once the others wear out. Of course, it comes with some RIP software and the RIP software this came with is main top. However, I did have to switch softwares while setting up but it does come with that and some other tools it also came with 100 sheets of dtf film that you will need to print your images and things on it came with this curing oven and the curing oven is pretty light so i was able to lift that up with no problem and y'all look how cute our printer is it has a panda face on it and i think it's so adorable and so I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the cushioning and take this and find a place to set this so that we can get started with our DTF printing. Also, it came with this output tray and this is very important because when those prints come out, you want it to be very, very stable and you don't want any of that ink to run or drip. And now we are just going to go ahead and remove the plastic and y'all look at this beauty. It is so cute so 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 cute so now we want to install the waste tank and this is where the waste tank would go in this area and we are just going to unclip this and attach it so first based on the video that they provide with detailed and visual instructions we are just going to cut the zip tie so the other part of the waste tank is inside of here where the ink cartridges or the ink tanks are I'm just going to slide this out so 
So for the waist tank, we're just going to place the tubing inside of one of those holes and this should line up. So each side, well, yeah, each side or three of the sides have openings. And so the openings that are farthest apart, that's where we would go here and your tubing will go there. I'm just gonna slide that in. So remember our kit. We have a tiny screwdriver and I think that will work fine for this. So yeah, this didn't work. I had to get my drill. We're all done removing the screws, but don't lose them because you need them for the next part. So we are going to place the waste tank onto the machine and you're just going to screw it back on. If you look above my hands on the left, there is the on and off switch and that controls the cyst system that's inside that circulates the ink so that your ink doesn't really coagulate. You still have to perform maintenance, but that provides a little heat and it lets that run. So. Here we go with some sponges. You want to put sponges inside of your jar because that is what's going to soak up that ink as it comes out. On top, there are two holes on the top or the lid of the jar, and you're just going to place your tube inside so that you don't have ink all over the place. Here's your power cord, and I'm going to plug that in to the machine and then also it comes with a USB that you most definitely need in order to print out any of your images and operate the printer. Now we need to turn it on by pressing this on button. So there's two power buttons. We have the one in the back. You turn that on first and then you press this one and this one will blink the printer will start to initialize and get flowing. And once this light is solid green, everything is all well with the printer. As you see, that light went on very quickly. And this is what the inside of our printer looks like. It looks like it is made very, very well. Next, you have to set the temperature of the machine or the preheating temperature. And so we're just gonna select set. And based on the instructions, they recommend between 35 and 45 degrees. So we're just gonna Put it at 35, click set. It's already set to 35, so we're all good. So next we're gonna go ahead and open up our paper feeder and you just wanna make sure that's working properly. I'm going to go ahead and just lift it up and that's, looks like that's as far as it goes. And then I'm going to insert paper. You can adjust the paper size of your paper and I'm just going to slide it over. So I'm just going to set it right here and just slide it over. We're putting a plain piece of paper just to feed it through. To feed the paper through, you will need to press the paper button that's right next to the power button and that will get the paper to feed through your printer. All right, so one of the sheets came out, and that did take a little bit of time for it to come out. So I don't know if that's because it's the first time, but it did take a while. So if you're just starting out, be patient with your machine and wait for the paper to come out. Okay, so the package also came with 
film. So this is DTF film that you'll be printing on. With DTF, you are printing on film, thus the direct to film title of DTF. And so let's go ahead and get out these sheets. And we also want to feed one of these through the machine as well. And so with this film, sometimes it may be a little difficult to tell which side you're printing on. This does have like a little sheen to it, this side, and this side appears to be a lot more matte than the other side. But what they tell you is that if you're able to scratch some of that powder off, then you are on the correct side. Because on this side, you can't scratch anything. All right, so let's go ahead and place this inside. And this sheet appears to be a little larger. So we're gonna complete the same process. We are going to press the paper symbol to feed it through. And so that one goes through a lot quicker. We are almost up and ready. So now we're going to push our printer back because we want to have space so that when that film comes out, it has a nice flat surface. And we do have to be conscious of that waste tank in the back. Another important part of our machine is this output tray. Very important to make sure that your prints do not smear or smudge or anything as it comes out of the printer so you want to make sure you have that there now we're going to feed through a piece of the film and see if that feeds through correctly and as you all see it does and so now we are ready to get started with putting our ink inside and so inside of where the ink chamber is, there are some tips for you, but they also did a nozzle check just to make sure everything was flowing before. And so we do have a sheet showing that everything looks correctly. And so now we are going to get ready to put the ink in, but I want to make sure that you all know that it's pretty much color coded. So you should know exactly where to put that ink in. It tells you the exact tanks where your ink needs to go so you want to make sure you follow that the printer also came with this ink from pro colored and we're going to get ready to put this into the tanks but y'all that top is so hard to come off <sighs> all right you may want to use something sharp to get that top open So yellow goes here, black goes here, white goes here. There are two white tubes here. And so we're gonna go ahead and place the black inside. So now that we're all done putting the ink in, now it's time for us to help guide some of that ink through the tank. And so we need to grab these syringes and these glue needles to help us do that. And this is what's going to help us. So these are the cartridges for each of the colors and the tubing so we actually want to start with the white i want to start pulling the white ink out since it's the lightest you can start in whichever order that's going to be easier for you we're going to go ahead and do the white those are uh those have two tubes attached so to do that we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take that white cartridge out and to help you remember the color each of them have like a, the color that should be going inside of it, inside or outside of it. So we're just gonna take our glue needle, stick it into there, and we're only going to take out about two to three ml of ink. So 
You want to make sure you're holding it here. You don't really want to press there. Okay, so we're going to see both sides. So you want to make sure you're holding it where there's a hard border. So I'm just going to go and we are going to pull some of that ink out. And as you guys see, that ink is starting to fill the cartridge. All right, and so we have about two. There's about two ml there of ink. All right, so next, you're going to don't push back through. You don't want to cause a mess, but I do have some alcohol wipes in case I need to clean it. And so now that that is out, I am going to, and we didn't make a mess, I'm going to put that one back inside. You just push it down. And if you see, look at that ink going through the tube now. So we're going to go ahead and grab the other white. Before I do that, I am going to empty this out. You can, if you want to trash it, you can. I'm actually going to just dump it back over here in the, the tank. You could also put it back inside of the original ink bottle. And so I'm going to repeat the same process. We're going to put that in there and I am holding around the edges and then we're going to guide that ink through. We want to make sure we just have about two to three ml of ink. And here we have about three. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead, pull it out. We did get a little bit of ink that came out, which is fine. I'm just going to clean that up and we're going to place this back inside. And now we're going to repeat the steps for the other colors. Okay, so we're all done and as you guys see, the ink is now flowing through the tubes based on this color setup. So everything matches and it's going in the opposite direction as the tanks that we filled, but everything is going exactly the way that it should. We also need to make sure that the ink that's coming out of the waste area will flow correctly as well. So we're going to remove the tube out of the top or out of the jar, we could have just opened it. And I am going to do the same thing that I did with the cartridges. We're just going to place the needle inside and we're going to help guide that ink out. Coming out, there it is. You just want to put a little bit in there. All right. And so we are going to remove the needle. Don't want to make a mess. I am going to place this back into the top. Back to this one. I'm going to place this back down. Just gonna screw it back on. So that setup was painless, and we're all done with setting the printer up. Now it's time for us to install our RIP software. And here I'm just communicating with the folks over at Pro Color via Skype to get that done. 
The machine comes with main top or slider. However, if you want to get another RIP software, there will be additional costs associated with it. And the RIP software allows you to print using that white ink that is necessary for the DTF process. So now we are all set up and I'm going to do my first print on the printer and it is coming out really nicely. That white looks really good on the back of the image and we are going to head over and begin to powder it. All right, so here's the print and what we want to do next is we want to apply the adhesive powder to the back and today we are using this powder from Big Boy Prints. So a little goes a long way. You want to make sure you have on gloves. You really should have on gloves during this part of the process. But I am sprinkling some just randomly around whatever technique you like. You can do that. But make sure you coat your image evenly. You don't need too much powder to get that done. And you can reuse that powder that does not stick to the image. So now we're going to get ready and turn on the oven and that is our power switch and we want to set this to 95 to 100 degrees Celsius and 200 seconds. So we are just going to go ahead and press that to set it and then we're just going to go down to 95 and there's like a little circle with an arrow, half oval arrow here for us to change. So I'm going to leave that at 100 degrees Celsius and we're going to wait for it to heat up. And then we're going to change the time to 200 seconds. And then we're going to press that again. And now we're just waiting for it to warm up. All right, so now we're at 100 degrees Celsius, and of course we're at 200 seconds. So we're just going to pull out the tray. I am going to place this onto the tray and just slide it in. Press start. And that will begin the countdown. So now we're all done curing our image and this is what you want it to look like. It should have a rubbery feel to it. It should kind of look like an orange peel or alligator skin and that lets you know that it's all cured. So we're ready to press and we are going to lint roll our shirts first and give it a pre-press. Today we are using our HTV Ront Auto Heat Press to apply the DTF transfer to our shirt and yes we did make a DTF transfer and so here we are now placing that transfer onto the shirt so that we can get ready to press the manufacturer or pro colored recommends to press it at 320 degrees for 40 seconds so that's what we are going to be doing today and we are all done pressing our shirt and our heat press is going to pop up for us and here we have our shirt. Now, the first steps, you don't want to go ahead and peel this off. You want this to cool down completely, okay? So let it cool down, right? So I let this cool down. This is a sped up video, but I let it cool down and this is what we have. And I think that so far this looks amazing. It looks amazing. It feels great. Now, what you want to do is next is you want to give it a second press. That second press really makes it become one with the shirt. And I will show you all a close up of how that will look. It really takes on the fibers of the shirt. Like it really, really soaks into that shirt. So that's what you want to do. And so that second press, I'm just pressing it for about 10 seconds. And we are all good to go. This looks amazing for our very first print with our new L1800 and look at that close up y'all that looks really good and that looks like that is a part of the shirt 
Okay, y'all, how easy was that to unbox it and get it set up and print out our first print? I do wanna thank ProColor again because their customer support system is amazing and they were able to walk me through the setup of the RIP software just to make sure everything was running correctly and they connected with me via Skype and it was really a seamless process. So I'm really impressed with this printer and I think it's a major upgrade to my business, especially coming from the type of printer that I had before. I think it is a major upgrade. I think it will make my business more effective and efficient. I can see this opening up the doors for even more customers because I have another printing method that I will be able to apply and make shirts or other items with this DTF printer. If you are considering getting a DTF printer, please be sure to check out color below a link will be listed so that you can check out all of their other DTF printers as well but when you're printing DTF you do want to make sure that you are being really safe because those fumes can be dangerous so you want to make sure that you are in a ventilated area or you have an air filter that can process that air out and make that air clean you don't want to be breathing that stuff in I would also recommend using gloves when handling the adhesive powder just to make sure you don't get that on your hands and cross-contaminate anything that could possibly possibly be consumed. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. In addition, head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join Craftable Things there as well. That's going to be it for today, y'all. Thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time.